All right. Uh, so again, uh, welcome and excuse if me if this might be a little disorganized because this talk was scheduled for tomorrow afternoon, the last talk. So, and I found out that I had to give this talk today at 1.20 after midnight tonight. So actually in the morning when I woke up. Uh, but okay, let's uh, kick this off. I'm going to talk about migrations, upgrades, relaunches, and several other words that are associated with this universe. Um, I'm going to start off with a real story that happened three weeks ago. Sorry. That is really inappropriate. Maybe people wanting to know where my talk is. It's in the secret room. Okay. Uh, a true story happened three weeks ago. Um, I was uh, working for a company. We did a uh, job for them, and I was uh, migrating a small intranet. Small means like 10 gigabytes of data, maybe, uh, from Plone 3 to 4.3. And when I uh, accepted that job, I hoped, OK, we're going to redo the design, add a lot of cool features that are new and exist in the world, reorganize all that content because, well, that internet just looked like a data dump and that's how they used it. Um, but I was wrong on all three accounts uh, because the customer was appalled by the very idea that actually anything changed while migrating the system from a four or five year old version to the newest one. For example, from my point of view, the new Tiny MCE in Plone 4.3 is really great for the customer. It was terrible because the preview button was missing in the add URL form. Actually, I like the preview button, but that it's not a deal breaker. But um, for them, it almost was. Actually, it was not. Then we could go online. Everybody was happy, except for me. So also, the new collections in Plone uh, did not provoke like moans of pleasure, but only ignorance. But there were moans of pain when they realized that the old advanced search form from Plone 3 was suddenly gone and replaced by something much more cool, my point of view. Uh, so what went wrong with this uh, project is that uh, the customer and the intermediaries um, did not think about this project as a relaunch, but only as a version upgrade. And also the customer had no idea what's possible and wishful in the 21st century in an intranet, but that's nobody's fault. Uh, another true story, I migrated a site uh, from Plone 2.5 to 4.1, took me five minutes, I just dumped the data in there and it was done. So there was zero customization. Uh, over the years I've migrated quite a lot of different sites from in various sizes and I'd like to present some of the lessons I've learned and some of the process I'm process I'm going through uh, with this and I beg you to please tell me the lessons that you learned from your migrations because I I'm sure you did the bigger ones so I think the primary uh, job uh, that can go wrong and most of the time does go wrong is uh, communication and project management which means doing such a good job that everybody's expectations are aligned in a uh, uh, sensible way. And one way to do that is defining what the heck we are actually talking about when we want to update, migrate, or b -b -b our site. So uh, the let's talk about the vocabulary here. A update, for example, would mean, from my point of view, a change in content. Like I updated the documentation, so it also covers Plone 4.3.2. Uh, an upgrade is, in my point of view, the adding of new functionality, like let's upgrade the website with a new newsletter and maybe a small intranet and stuff. Uh, but also, 
changing from one Plone version to a new one, like let's upgrade to the newest Plone version so we'll become more secure, faster, and whatever. But it's also switching to an edition of the same version, which has maybe more, um, more features and a higher price, like, hey, I just upgraded from Microsoft Office Home, prim home Standard Basic, boring to Professional Super Plus. And migrations, third word, are the process of getting a Plone site from one uh, version to the other. Wave, sorry. Um, <coughs> and also the process of moving content from one, one site or one system to another. So these, are these words are used in various ways. So like, s let's migrate from uh, AT content types to Plone app content types, or like, let's migrate from SharePoint to Plone. And next word, redesign, that's kind of simple, okay? We're changing the visual appearance of the site. And rewrite, okay, that's, we'll have to rewrite everything from scratch because we just decided we forked Plone in version one and we're not gonna be supported anymore. Everybody knows I'm what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay, uh, so the vocabulary used to describe upgrades is opaque at best. And I think uh, there's two lessons to be learned from that. First is uh, if any of the, if more than one of the words that were in the vocabulary were used, you should, ex you should, or sh you should want to approach the project as a relaunch. And the second is don't talk in these words, talk about what you actually do. Okay, we're gonna change the design. We're gonna change the version from to, mm. so both uh, partners know what they're actually talking about because there's a lot of different types of uh, migrations. Uh, for example, changing f f to a responsive design, is that a redesign or an upgrade? Or migrating changing from 4.3.1 to 4.3.2 in Plone, is that an update, an upgrade or migration? I wouldn't know. That's why I have to talk clearly about this. So, <coughs> why do we want to upgrade in the first place? Uh, the main reason for me is to ease my development process. For example, I can't use Sentry in a four, uh, Python 4.2 system. So. Plone 3 has a huge pain point for me there and several others. Uh, I want to use all these shiny new features that I, I'm trying to write myself and I'm deploying sites that can't have them because they're older versions. So I want to upgrade sites that people actually use them. And also developers want to learn new stuff every time they want to touch their keyboard. They're not, uh, they don't want to do repetitive stuff. They're not factory workers. So they also want to get rid of legacy code and use current versions of add-ons that will not be compatible with older versions. So, but selling this to a customer is kind of hard because customers don't care about clean code, robot tests, security, or actually you having fun while doing the job for them. Customers actually care, uh, don't care that collections are way cool or that, yeah. But if you tell me, collections is a good example. They don't, uh, they don't care about collections that you think they're cool and they have a shiny new interface. But if you tell them their users might be more able uh, to produce content in a faster and more uh, reliable way, they might actually listen because now you can give the permission to add a collection not only to managers but maybe site managers, maybe editors and so on. So they do care about in this specific order about design, design and design and then usability, maybe functionality that is important and something uh, I learned that is really, really helping to, how do you say, seal the deal tiny MCE and Internet Explorer 9 actually had three migrations that were solely based on this interest. Okay, I don't care, I'm gonna do that anyway. Uh, and they're also uh, concerned about money, that, but that's like, that's always the case. So if you actually have a customer and you try to tell them 
you sold them on one of these five, oops, that was absolutely wrong. That was so wrong, so many levels. On any of these five points, plus whichever you think are interesting, uh, you'll have to find out, out which uh, sort of migration it's going to be. And there are two uh, very important questions you can ask, and these are very simple. What about the content and what about the design? And if you uh, get answers for these two questions, you're going to learn a lot. You're actually going to learn everything you're going to need for this project. Afterwards, you're gonna still going to have to manage that. Because if the customer starts think thinking about changing one aspect of the page, and also is not completely opposed to thinking about the second aspect of the page, they actually everything is up, open. So, the uh, how do you say in English? Everything is up for grabs, maybe something like that. Um, that's just because most customers. I'm talking about. Yeah, maybe ha you have different different customers. My customers approach a website as. Uh, a unity, not a mix of separate si things like uh, there's content, there's design, there's function, but this yeah, it's my website. Yeah, sure, we want to change the design. Uh, I told you we want to upgrade the site. Yes, that was not initially uh, logical for me, but surely I want that. So it's a lot of this is about the state of the mind of the customer, and um, once you find out what it is, uh, we ha you have to do it. And I'm going to go through a virtual use case um, and I'm going to choose one of uh, the, well, the most important step I'm going to do in place uh, update, so in clone update. So I'm not going to use, uh, how do you say, uh, transmogrifier and I'm not going to move from SharePoint to clone. So I have one clone site, I'm going to make a relaunch or an upgrade to the other version, and it's maybe a 5 to 10 gigabyte website or intranet. going to upgrade to the newest from, th from some Plone 3 version. I'm going to add a Diazo theme, several uh, cool functionality, move content around a lot, maybe move it to dexterity, probably not, uh, but keep the content basically, even though it moves. And also most of the configuration, that is users' permission, local roles, extremely important keep all of this intact. So first you need to make a plan and add a very generous timeline to that plan. And uh, while you do that, or even before you do that, you might present very important changes to the customer. One example springs to mind, tiny MCE again. Put it in a, s in a clean website, give it to a customer, find out if they're happy with it, because this is a huge pain point. The editor, a lot of uh, Customers use CK editor or whatever, and when something small changes, it can affect uh, the outcome of the project. They actually stop a project. They actually stopped a project half a year ago because of some list bug in TinyMCE. It's just beginning to run now again. So um, these three are important. You have to know your upgrade guide in Plone. That is basic knowledge. And then you do uh, migrate your code, but not in the site. You take your eggs that you developed yourself and try to get them to run in a clean site. Put up a 431 site, use the, the newest version of your, the build of your, out of your choice, put every s all the d dependencies, all the stuff in that is in the actual site, but no data at all, and get that to run. Put all the code in, uh, that you change in special special branches like a plone 4 branch or whatever and try to get that to run that might actually take some time depending on your products that you wrote or the add-ons that you used so <coughs> i'm going to have to and you'll have to make sure that these products also install and reinstall and uninstall properly but that's Uninstall is a bonus point for customer projects because when they have a like a custom content type for them that's been written for them, that's like, we really, really want that. And they can decide, if they, do you really want that and be have it properly encapsulated and uninstalled or not? Maybe they want to stick with it for the rest of their lives. Um, so 
<coughs> and if necessary, you have to migrate uh, third-party add-ons that are mission critical. Uh, others you might just drop, like slideshows. There might be better slideshows. There actually are better slideshows. When you have a Plone 3 site, there definitely are better slideshows. So, and then you prepare for the migration yourself, and you need lots of disk space that is uh, at least four times the size of the database, and at least two times or one and a half times the size of the database in the temp directory, or you uh, redirect that there's a Linux magic, I don't know, uh, put the temp directory somewhere else. I, I got bitten by this so many times but uh, that I have it in my default process now to just check, can I write in the temp with customer servers? My servers, I can write in temp directory. Customer servers, I have 10 megabytes in a uh, temp directory at one point. 10 megabytes and a 10 gigabyte database, and so that's not going to work. Um, so, but you need to keep the original databases for comparison and keep them in a separate directory so y they can run at the same time. So you can look, oh, why is this broken? How should it like? Which interfaces does this implement? So that's very important. You need a lot of uh <coughs> disk space, and for many in-house customer uh, deployments, that is a pain point because some of them l use really expensive hardware and uh, even like 10 gigs of disk space is something you really have to argue about. Hey, need more 10, 10 gigs more hard spa hardware space. That's crazy, but uh, it still is like this. And make frequent snapshots while you do the migration. Um, but we're not doing the migration yet. Well, but when you do do snapshots, before you just, after packing the database, before you migrate, uh, before you reinstall your products, just keep them around because you'd otherwise you'd have to go back to zero and that just takes a lot of time. Um, and then take a text file, very important. This is an example for a text file and make notes and make every change that you have to make, make a note, make a new line, write it down and this Si this file will grow in size, it might grow endlessly, at but at the end of the project that file ha would uh, be empty again. So you'll have to, this is all the stuff you'll have to do by hand in the beginning and then afterwards you automate it and it'll r be removed on from the text file again. It's really important. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> So then you remove customizations all through the web stuff that might be stuck in there. You clean up all the add-ons, so you remove all the stuff that you don't need, like FCK, uh, CK Editor, uh, the, uh, the galleries that I mentioned, uh, because you just try to run your code in the clean code base. The, the, run the full code, uh, the full database already still has this stuff, and you might have real problems on installing uh, Collective Easy Slideshow, for example. Yes. Uh, then do a clear and rebuild and clean up the database, uh, pack the database and move it uh, to a new build. Cop not move it, copy it. Make like keep it in place, move it to a new directory. That's the Plone 4 directory. And uh, this Plone 4 directory uses the same products, except for the ones that you threw out, but just different other branches of these. Look, uh, Mr. Developer is your friend here branch Plone 4 and these are some default uh, Plone add-ons and you just fix some journal translations and that's what I usually do. And then I don't make a release but I just use, before I'm really ready I'm just going to use a source checkout. So <coughs> then you try to start it up and see it all go down in flames and spend a lot of time fixing all the errors that come from imports that you might have missed or s components that are pro broken, uh, persistent utilities that, I don't know, got, got lost on the way. Uh, that takes some time, maybe, maybe none if you're lucky and if you did your job while uh, migrating your add-ons uh, well. And still document everything that you have to change. Never forget any change. Never, never think, yeah, I know I'm going to have to delete this folder later again and I'm not going to write this down. You will forget it because migrations have stall phases at some points when the customer decides, oh, maybe this add-on is not ready to be done yet. We'll still have to add a new feature to the theme, uh, to the slideshow, slideshows. 
could tell you endless stories about slideshows. Um, and then disable uh, a lot of stuff like all the viewlets, all the portlets, um, all the most of the actions actually, because actions are hard to migrate. Just kick them out and do them anew. And uh, so get your site running so that you can see the data. Uh, make it so that you can find out if your data actually is still there and is accessible, and then uh, work hard to remove all the stuff that is obsolete and do a migration of the database. That is, sometimes it's here, sometimes it's here or here. That depends on the project when, y when you do uh, the actual migration of the database. So <coughs> now I have it actually up there. Uh, if this fails, uh, run upgrade steps one at a time because the uh, log output from the upgrade steps is a nightmare. You will not f easily find out which upgrade step actually failed. Um, and if one breaks and you can't find out what it is, just comment it out and try to find out later when you actually can access the database. At one time I had to migrate a database five times and all every time I was unable to access it afterwards. It was everything was there. I got into the ZMI route. What the moment I tried to access the database uh, uh, in the in the plum side, I didn't get any access. So I, I was locked out. So I uncommented the step uh, add uh, site admin, and everything was great. Site admin because they had their own site admin, and that conflicted. More water. Then check the through the web customizations that you didn't throw away, but you just uncommented them by giving them some useless name like B A K for backup, for example. Uh, adding uh, prefixes that uh, uh, make sure that they don't get picked up by Plone, um, and drop all the stuff that you don't need, uh, and then automate all these things that you have in your text file. Write migration steps to like migrate the folder of user X who has like died 10 years ago but had weird stuff in there that is broken beyond repair. Put in a up long upgrade step. It's actually going to only run once. There's you don't need any tests for that. <coughs> you can uh, forget that code afterwards, but it has to work that one time when you do the migration. So lose uh, all that stuff in upgrade steps, actually one big upgrade step. And use smart tools like Collective Upgrade or for Teamworks Upgrade. They're uh, quite useful if you do complex uh, migrations. And then test the hell out of your site. Uh, because you don't want to find serious bugs um, shortly before or after you launch. Uh, I found out that <coughs> when the launch of the English version of a site got postponed, which is incredibly stupid and but not and not my decision, because the site got launched, but the English site got not launched. The only thing that actually got not launched was the link to the English site, but all the external links are still there. Uh, and then we found out that Lingua uh, Plone was broken with Chameleon. I still don't know what that actually was. Maybe it had something to do with the theme, but we just because it's like one day after the launch, uh, they decided, okay, and now let's really translate the, the stuff to English. And uh, at with some content types, they got weird errors. So we threw out Chameleon and it worked again. So you have to be uh, prepared and willing to do the really dirty fixes. You lose some speed, but hey, you got caching. So, and then, well, this, happened, uh, the, the, that problem I just mentioned that happened after the real migration. We, in this story, were still in the test migration. We didn't migrate the data f uh, base and launch the new site. This is the test migration on your laptop on or your development machine, whatever. Uh, and then add the shiny new stuff, add the new theme, add new functionality, add the new gallery. Um, do the redesign. I could talk a lot about redesigns, but I think I'm going to skip that because of the time. Uh, and it's a little out of the scope of this talk. Um, 
So, and then repeat the process. And you can be sure that you'll have to repeat not the process of writing the upgrade steps, you'll have to do that once. Uh, but if you, if you didn't do it after the first time, you're actually already going to be angry with yourself because you'll have to do them twice by hand and three times by hand because it's ah, next time is going to be the real migration, but it's not. So you do everything by hand and thought, ah, no upgrade steps, let's just do it by hand, it's going to be okay. It's not going to be okay. Write an upgrade step. Uh, you'll s it saves you a lot of time. Um, and then you'll have to really migrate the site itself and that is, uh, that is a very different problem that's also a little out of the scope of this talk and I'd really like your input there because it very much depends on how much content gets edited by day, how many users are logged in at, the at one certain time, how much data actually there is. Sometimes you have like databases with 100 gigabytes that won't fit on my machine. So if I tell you, okay, keep, keep four times the size of the database and look at me, I'm not going to find a laptop with this, um, actually not a MacBook Air with this size. Uh, so these uh, things vary a lot. Uh, but what we usually do is um, if there is no huge content restructuration, uh, we tell the customer, okay, stop editing for one day, maybe two, maybe only half a day if it's a quick job, and we're going to get your site new up, up new again and just switch the uh, web uh, server uh, Nginx, turn it around and you don't see any... any you don't, uh, the, cu the person l uh, visiting the page won't realize uh, what changed. But uh, you can also, and that's what the, recent, the last project was, uh, they had to stop editing, no, they had to edit both sites uh, twice, so the the old side was still edited, and the new side that was uh, um, already migrated all the code, all the database, but it's running on a different server, and they were uh, reorganizing all the content, and that's where they didn't get didn't get around uh, with the uh, English content. So, but they already had to stop uh, for two, uh, not stop, but they already had two weeks of simultaneously editing two page uh, two we uh, two sites and they didn't want to keep doing this until they finished the English version of the site, so they decided, okay, let's go online and reboot the English site later. Weird idea, but... Um, so plans always go wrong, because the initial plan was like seven days of uh, migrating content, but that didn't work. So, uh, but there's also the way, like, you save new content into another temporary database. Uh, some, usually it's just contents, text, news items, something like that put it in some JSON files somewhere or however, and re-import it uh, while uh, editing. So you put something in the old side that uh, sucks out everything that comes in that is new and uh, automatically writes in, news in the new side. If you did something like this, I'd really like to know. So the challenges and pitfalls in this process uh, need to be named. And uh, the two most important are the, the customer that doesn't really know what he wants, and but that is kind of your fault because your mouth is so big that you tell them, hey, your site's going to be so new and so fast and so cool and so so much better because you get carried away with the wish of upgrading a site uh, that you forget what ac what the customer actually wants. So uh, the communication is the big uh, challenge and pitfall there, and also if the desi design uh, needs to be kept. That's a big problem because tiny things change and uh, customers know their site, site much better than you do know their uh, site, even if you might have developed them t in some earlier century. Um, and they are used to what they know and they often react very negatively to even tiny changes uh, that you might even perceive as completely irrelevant or as improvements like TinyMC. Um, be clear about costs and risks and say like, okay, your design is not going to work in IE 6. In IE 7 it's going to look like shit, but IE 8 is great. And in the IE 9, now you can edit that. Uh, so uh, communicate really well. Um, and 
the another problem or uh, more a challenge is the legacy stuff. So if you have old databases, old content that cannot really be migrated, that is problematic, that is pulled from somewhere, uh, use Diazo or Deliverance and Corden just isolate this stuff and pull it in via Diazo or Deliverance. Uh, you save a lot of time and the customer saves a lot of money there. And uh, another problem is always multilingual because it is so much work. So the time is essential. The, te the technology is there. Everything like with Ponab, Ponab Multilingual, LinguaPlone actually is great, except for LinguaPlone not running with Chameleon, which I didn't know. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's actually not a bug, but only in the theme. Uh, but that's always a big problem. And relations, I usually lose relations during upgrades. So I usually have to export them to a huge U, uh, UUID list and import them again. Uh, so I already got upgrade steps for this ready in my box. And OK, these are some lessons that I learned. Is that, oh, communicaciona. That's not even Portuguese. Sorry, that's a typo. Uh, so communication project management kills projects if it's not done really good. And uh, Obviously, I'm not perfect at that, and I'd like your input on how to improve that. Not me, but the whole process there. Uh, every uh, migration case is different. That's that's banal. Uh, every, n but uh, this is important, I think. Every non-trivial upgrade should be approached as a relaunch. So you that makes your life much easier because you can communicate changes that they might, if they would not perceive or approach uh, their migration as a relaunch, uh, that they perceive these changes as a problem. And now they uh, perceive it as, okay, we're relaunching, so we expect stuff to change. And they might actually see that the collections are much better now and they see that the plone app search is a huge improvement over the old uh, search uh, even the advanced search although there is a package that pulls in the advanced search in the new plone 4 i can't remember what it's called but someone wrote that it's actually quite useful for customers who want their old stuff back and uh, the last uh, lesson i learned is don't experiment keep the technologies that are new to you to two or maybe only one. So if you're new to Diazo and new to Dexterity, don't try both at the same time. Only do one, maybe do none, depending on the customer and how safe you feel. Uh, we tried to move a project to Dexterity, including migrations, to Diazo, including the toolbar and Planet widgets and well, we had to throw out two of these. That was kind of expected. Uh, so don't try more than two ne new technologies at once. And uh, don't experiment too much because uh, some things might go wrong. And keep a back backup plan. Uh, with the toolbar, that's kind of easy. You have uh, on and Diazo. The customer was too cheap to, for to pay us for theming the back end. So we... Uh, got another domain like edit dot blah blah and that was only approachable through virtual private network and it was unthemed and the customer is absolutely happy and we don't have to use the toolbar that is not yet 100% production ready. Actually I think it's production ready but only for users who think okay this is not working let's approach this another way but if you have 20 editors and they're used to like do this all the all the time and they can't go from folder contents to look at the site actually they might really be pissed off okay so time for questions and actually I have two for you oh one for you how do you uh, you know this this happens when you get an email at half past 12 in the morning telling you you have to give a talk uh, so how do you estimate time and cost for a migration? That is one of many questions that I don't have a real answer to because I'm always kind of wrong, N never like tra tragically, we're not bankrupt, uh, but it's really, really hard because there's so many moving pieces and unvariables. I'm, I'm not going to have this on video, please. So I'm going to go back to the first slide, which looks much better. Okay.
questions, if you dare. Please. You want the mic? Can I have the mic microphone, please? Test. Yes. Yes. Can you uh, share some of your experience on moving, uh, moving the actual content from one plot installation to another, like things like you, you said uh, in the morning that you haven't used Transmogrifier, but I think that, that for, for sites the, the, as big as you, you told, even small intranets like 10 gigabytes of data, it's, it's a little bit complicated to just go to the ZMI and click export. So I'm thinking you have some other kind of magic uh, up in your sleeves. Uh, magic, well, I think uh, ZMI uh, export, ZX, works amazingly well. Uh, I wouldn't have expected that, but I used it in a lot of projects. I actually migrated a whole intranet from one site to another and I had virtually no problems. Well, you have to rebuild the relations, but uh, the content itself, it worked pretty well. Um, so I, that would be my first option. Try this. If this fails, um, before you start using Transmogrify, which I think is a really powerful tool, but not easy to set up. So for, for a budget project that might ruin your, your calculation, uh, maybe funnel web, just parse the old page and uh, have it create new content. There are several tools that do that. One is funnel web, I think. Um, but maybe other, pe uh, other people have other opinions on that. And um, I actually uh, I live with broken objects in my database at some time, sometimes. Like if, if the website has a limited lifespan, say, okay, this project has funding from the government, but it's going to run out in four years. But they have singing and dancing in there. I don't care. They, they just carry it around with them for the next four years. Afterwards, the project will die. I, I won't spend a week sleepless or working on... Actually, I would love to if they'd pay me to uh, migrate that site with Transmogrifier and thus getting them rid out of... Uh, from. Uh, of singing and dancing, but I wouldn't advise them to do that. Even I take the money, but that's kind of useless work, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not so much a question, it was uh, just supporting your view on this. I mean, we are ourselves, I mean, we are not the top experts in Plon, but all our clients, they're actually running the latest version always. And as you describe it, some they have they're giving a lot of money for maintaining things, and of course they somehow pay the party, but it's important for us that we only have one version running because it's much easier to maintain things, and you can say by, by doing the same thing repeatedly, then also it's, it's, it's pretty fast to, to do it in the end instead of uh, waiting for many years and having clients on different clones. So, I mean, my advice is just do it, and also it works surprisingly well. One of the things we can see helps us a lot is having pretty big servers, so we have a lot of speed also in the process, so it's easy to, to try things out if it doesn't work, and we have different servers also, so it's easy to move around, so we can try things on one server, and, and simply a little um, try and error, and sometimes the try is enough, you can say, and that's the nice thing. Yeah, we only have one Plone 3 right, uh, site running on our own servers, uh, our own hosting system, uh, customers have stuff running. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to touch. Uh, more questions or maybe input. Yeah, I, kn I know you guys at Netside. You did huge migrations using uh, Transmogrifier, uh, and a lot of other people did. We're not gonna get deep into that. But what, what do you think about the main problem being project management and communications? Do you agree there, or is that bullshit? Sorry. I think the I think the main problem with this uh, with migrations, particularly between major plane versions, is estimating the work involved. And um, 
you can't do a small amount of work and then scale that up linearly or using some algorithm mathematics to estimate the total amount of work. You really have to do the work before you know how long it's going to take. And uh, the m wider variety of content types and functionality that you have in the site, such as a more complex intranet or something like that, you know, the, the, the more edge cases there are and the more complexities there are, that y y it's very hard to predict. And I think it's actually quite a risk offering to upgrade between major plane versions without uh, a lot of background research and, uh, and, and establishing a, an understanding with the customer whereby uh, it's not necessarily going to be fixed price work. Yes. I completely agree with you. Yes. And it's also very hard to sell an upgrade as like okay, the customer thinks we're just changing the, the version. If I change my Word version, it costs me like 100 euros. Why, why do you want 10,000 euros? Why? And that's why I think uh, the best approach is the relaunch and the design with this. Yeah, I agree. I th that. That's worked well for us as well, to consider it as a, yeah. a new version of the site, yes. not just an upgrade. OK. Any more questions? Yes. When I, uh, just a, 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 a contribution to this di discussion is that uh, sometimes when my client, I, I work for an, uh, an internal IT department. So when the user comes to me and complains about something like, oh, it's, why is, is it too hard to just change a, a picture here or to just reorganize the design here? And why is that so hard? I always, uh, I, I, I always tell them, uh, do you expect usually when you upgrade the, ver uh, the Word version that you can choose what would be the logo type or uh, the, dispose, the, dispose, the disposition of the menus? You never want to customize that. So that's why it's too easy to upgrade Word and it's too hard to upgrade Plon or any other Customized, heavily customized too. That's a good, good comparison. Actually, Word does let you change the order of the menus. It's yeah. let you do that since Word 6. That's <laughs> true, but you, you can't say, okay, my save button has to be, uh, I don't know, a flower. Yeah, you can. You can? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. I haven't used Word since Word 6, actually. So I, I, I skipped that. Other questions? Okay, thanks for coming and have a great evening.